Hi, and welcome to part two of our sugar discussion. I'm Scarlett, and this is the Sequestered Chef series, and we're going to talk today about think, of, think about your drink. We're gonna, last week we talked about sugar and food and ways to uh, reduce the amount of sugar we're eating, either by changing up and trying some only natural sugar uh, recipes or even just trying recipes and cutting the amount of sugar in the recipe by half and see if you like that. <clears throat> I hope some of you are able to do that and, and realize that maybe you don't need so much sugar um, and maybe it's some of the other flavors that you really like and, and they'll come out more when you're not covering them with sugar. But today we're going to talk about the sugar in your beverages. And that is how we get most of our sugar, actually, is through what we drink. And that is the worst kind of sugar to get because when you eat sugar, like in an apple or a piece of fruit, um, there's other things in there like fiber that your body has to break down. So it slows the process of getting sugar to your bloodstream. But if you just come in and you hadn't had anything to eat or maybe you don't like breakfast, but you drink a Coke every morning to get you up and going, that sugar goes straight into your bloodstream. There's nothing stopping it. So you're going to get a really big spike really fast. And um, even if you just have one 12 ounce soda a day, that increases your risk of heart disease by one third. So I'll hear a lot of people say, oh, I just drink one a day. It's no big deal, but it really is a big deal. In fact, um, if you drink one or two, so suppose you drink that soft drink for breakfast in the morning, instead of coffee to get your caffeine, and then you drink a big old glass of sweet tea in the evening with your dinner. Just those two extra a day, if you do that every day, you've increased your chance for diabetes by 26%. So even if you don't completely cut sugar out, maybe we can try to reduce it a little at a time. And I'm a huge believer of reducing or making changes slowly. That's the problem with New Year's resolutions is Everybody wants to make this big grand change at the first of the year and it's hard and it's not sustainable and by the end of January you're so frustrated you just completely give up. Where if you had broken that big goal down into tiny little steps, you probably would have been successful. So the same with sugar, I suggest starting small. I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that in a minute. But don't just try to go cold turkey because you're probably not going to be successful. and. And I, I really do want you to be successful. So um, if you, at the end of this video, if you need some more guidance, you're, feel free to reach out to me at fitter, fitterbyfar at gmail.com. Or you can check out my Fitter by Far Facebook page. And um, as y'all know, a lot of times I have a Pinterest page that goes with whatever topic. And this one, I do have some uh, fruit infused recipes for you for making water like you see in the fancy hotel lobbies. Um, we can do some of those. Um, we're gonna talk about that at the end in just a minute. But <clears throat> let's talk about two kinds of sugar, glucose and fructose. So glucose is in carbs that we eat. And uh, again, there's other things in there that slows the digestion down. It goes into our liver. The liver takes what it needs in the, of the glucose and the rest goes out through your bloodstream to the rest of your body. That is not how it works with fructose. And yet, that is what is in fruit, but keep those separate for just a minute. Um, one of the ways that you might hear fructose, and we talked about it in the last video, was high fructose corn syrup. And I told you in the last video how that came to be in the 70s. It's made from corn. It's very cheap, so it's in a lot of processed food. I have read some articles lately that high fructose syrup is not the devil that it was made out to be. <clears throat> but if it's in everything that you eat and your diet isn't mostly whole foods like just fruits and vegetables that you're eating snack crackers and cakes and things like that that are packaged, you're getting a lot of it. So it is not great for your health just because of the sheer quantity that you're eating. So you might hear some or read some articles or hear some things on the news that high fructose syrup has gotten a bad rap just like you hear eggs are good, eggs are bad, oh they're good again. You're going to hear the same thing about that but just remember it's the amount, of, the amount that you're taking in. So back to the fructose, when it goes into your body your liver takes all the fructose it can get. It doesn't just take a little bit, it takes everything, all of the fructose. So whatever your liver doesn't need it just stores it as fat. So even though we've always heard you shouldn't eat fatty food because it'll make you fat, this is how sugar 
also makes you fat. In fact, um, the Heart Associ American Heart Association has some guidelines about how much sugar we should eat. But first, uh, the USDA guidelines are that 10% of your calories should be, um, no more than 10% of your calories should be added sugar. And if you'll remember from last time I showed you, the, there's a new, uh, a new food label that came out in January of this year, and it has to list out the amount of added sugar. So when I'm doing this and counting my sugars, um, I don't count the sugar in apples or bananas or whatever else. I mean, I just worry about the added sugars because those are easier to find and, and it gets a little tedious to try to look up the food value for everything, especially if you're new and you're, and you're not um, really into counting your macros. It gets a little tedious and frustrating and you'd give up. So I'm just going to say start with counting the added sugars that you'll find on the food label. Now the older food labels are not required to have that, so if you find one that doesn't, that, that's why it's because the law just changed this January. And um, so you'll just look there and I'm going to give you a couple of tips. So go back to our example about the 10%, no more than 10% of added sugars based on your um, calorie intake. So suppose you eat about 1600 calories a day. And uh, so 10% of that would be no more than 160 calories of sugar, but let's break that down a little bit more. So here's the little cheat sheet for you. For calories of sugar, there are um, divided by four, and that's how many grams you'll get. And grams are what is listed on the food label, so that's why you need to know that. So if you, need, if you can have 160 calories of sugar, you divide that by four, that's 40 grams of sugar. So that's how you read the label. Let's break it down a little bit more so you can get in your head, because a lot of people don't know what a gram is, which is normal. Not many people, at least in the United States, knows how big a gram is. But if you take for every um, gram of sugar, you divide that by four, and that equals your teaspoon. So that 160 calories which the USDA says that you can have a day. Divide that by four, that's 40 grams of sugar. 40 grams of sugar is 10 teaspoons. So you can have 10 teaspoons of sugar a day. Now the American Heart Association is a little more strict. They think that for a man, you should limit your sugar every day to 36 grams and for a woman, 24. So you can see that's even a little bit um, more restrictive. I think um, that comes out to be six teaspoons of sugar for a woman. And you know, I think I told you this last time, those little um, yogurts that you get a lot of times for breakfast, well, you've blown that whole budget just in, in that one yogurt. So let's go back to talking about our liver. So when you're, um, you take in the fructose and that goes to your liver, your, fruit, your liver loves fructose and it takes all the fructose for itself. It doesn't really want to share. So if you're drinking a lot of things with that kind of sugar in it and you're overloading the liver, the liver takes what it can use and the rest it converts to um, fat. So that's how even though you think that you know you're not supposed to eat butter and red meat and fatty meats and things like that, sugar, that's why sugar is also, um, it will cause you to get fat is because the liver is taking all of that sugar and turn it into fat. And that's where words like triglycerides and cholesterol and insulin and um, visceral fat come into play. It's because of you're starting to store that fat. And, and it's not because you're eating, you know, butter and sour cream and all of that. It's because you, you might be overloading your body with sugar. And, um, those words also are the words that go along with cardiovascular disease and diabetes, like I was mentioning earlier. So it's, um, I would really encourage you to do some research on your own and read about this, because um, me telling you is one thing, but if you go and read a few articles about it, it'll stick in your head, and as you're picking up your groceries every week, it, you might think about it a little bit more and start making a little bit different choices. And while you're researching, you might run across uh, fatty liver disease and sugar belly and those are two conditions that can come about um, you also might hear those words sometimes with alcohol um, you know how you, you see people when you call a beer belly 
Well, the same thing happens with sugar. You can have that big belly because of the amount of sugar that you're eating. And you can even test this. Um, if you decide to cut back on your sugar, it'll probably take you about three days to get your sugar number where you need it to be. And then try for a few more days after that. And one of the first things you're gonna notice is um, your belly gets flatter. It, it might not be a huge difference, but you will definitely notice that your belly has got, the scale might not change a lot, but your belly size will definitely change. Okay, so now let's talk about some ideas about how to swap out the drinks that you might be drinking now and slowly make that change to drinking water or at least something between water and what you're drinking now. So, like I said a while ago, remember um, if you go into a hotel and you see this beautiful container and it's got orange slices or lemon slices, well, you can do that yourself because here's one I got at, I think I got this one at Walmart, but I saw one at Kroger on Tom Hill last week. Actually, it was a double one. It was really pretty. So if you have this made up and sitting on your counter, you almost can't not drink it. And some of the things that you can put in it, you can cut up strawberries. Um, you can do lemon or orange slices, lemon slices, and this is the mint that I grow out on my deck that I've told you about. So what you would do is you crush it a little bit so that it, the um, flavor comes out. The same thing with these. You have to make sure that you cut it. So if you cut this in wedges, maybe you probably need to poke it with your knife or whatever so that the juices can get out. If you don't want to do this or you can't find one of these, maybe you can find one of these. I got this on Amazon. So you put your fruit and your mint or whatever you're going to put in there in that and then you fill it with water and then you just keep refilling it. This is 28 ounces so about three of these a day would be great for me. And then you just sip on it throughout the day and because you have crushed the mint and um, made sure that the juices of the fruit can get out it'll just flavor your water all day um, if you're not quite ready to go straight to water and fruit here's some ideas this is just sparkling water you can pour one of these into this container or you might need to do two i'm not big on carbonated drinks so one was definitely enough for me and then these are little packets that are sweetened with stevia I believe that the peach lemonade actually has one gram of sugar, but this one is just stevia. And you just put one or two of those in the water as well with this carbonation. And that just gives you a little bit of a flavored drink. And maybe the carbonation is what you like in the soft drinks more than just the drink um, and the sugar. So this is a great way to get started. And um, then you can also, if you make the one, the lemonade one, you could always cut up some lemon and put that in there as well. Maybe you need to buy something like this. Um, this the sugar in this is also stevia and erythritol. It, it's not um, actual table sugar. So maybe you need to water this down and, and put it in that container and slowly wean off of this straight to water. And last, you have probably seen these in the store. They're called Mio. Those are actually, um, they have sucralose in them, which I'm not a fan of that. Um, on the list of alternative sugars, that's not one. I would go with erythritol or um, stevia, really. Um, but, but it's better than drinking soft drinks. So, and you just put in as many drops as you want for the taste. Eventually, hopefully, you'll wean down to just a few drops and then down to water. So, I've got quite a few um, recipes on the Pinterest page about how to make the water, different ideas with different fruits. Um, you can use watermelon also. I, just, I couldn't find any watermelon at the store this week. Um, there are starting to be more things in the store, but that was not one of the things I could find this week. So um, again, if you have any questions about reducing your sugar, I'd be glad to answer some questions, give you some more ideas. Um, you can reach me at foodorbyfar at gmail.com. Hopefully the wellness center will open soon. And I'm, if you see me walking around in there, uh, you can just stop me and ask me about it. Um, again, you can go to the Pinterest page or you can reach out to me on my Facebook page at Fitter by Far. So have a great day um, and I hope that you have started making baby steps to reducing the sugar in your diet. Um, 
a, the drinks is the best way. Actually, that's the quickest way to make some changes is in what you drink. And I know I've said this in several of the videos, but if you want to make sure that you're properly hydrated, especially as we're going into the summer. So one way um, that you can do that is to take your weight, divide that in half, and that's how many ounces you should drink a day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, half of that is 75. So that's the number of ounces that you'll drink. And I think I've told you this before, but um, a 16 ounce bottle like this, that would be four and a half of those. So that's so easy. You can make that happen um, every day and just make sure you're sufficiently hydrated, especially if you're outside working or exercising. You don't want to start feeling sluggish and tired and dizzy because you didn't get enough liquid. And the liquid that you're putting in your body hopefully will be less sugary and more healthy for you. So have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.